Welcome to the marketing ecosystem. My name's Christo from Basic Bananas. I'm gonna show you how to improve all of your marketing, basically in a systematic way, now consistently, so it's sustainable. So your business is growing and moving in the right direction, or at least you know where you need to focus to continually grow it. There's a common, conf like, it's common that there's confusion around marketing and what to focus on and where to go and should I be focusing on social media? Should I be getting someone to do articles on my website? Should I be paying Google Ads or SEO? Now, I'm gonna show you how it all fits in because if you're just doing things kind of like rolling the dice on one strategy and a different strategy, you'll never have this aligned marketing ecosystem where it all serves the one purpose, which really should be to grow your brand and get more sales and consistently get more sales. So I'll show you how to put it all together and the key numbers that you absolutely have to measure within different areas of your marketing and then how you can really dive into different strategies. The having worked, I guess the thing is having worked with thousands of businesses over the years now as Basic Bananas, we've been running since 2009 and sharing a lot of strategies and working with a lot of businesses, whether you're business to business, business to consumer, product, service, whatever you offer, uh, this will relate to you. We get to see what's working and what's not through all of the businesses we assist. And basically the whole, everything we do is about helping people grow their brand and get more customers. Now, there are lots of strategies that we can fit into this framework that I'm about to go through, but you have to have the framework to basically make them all aligned, like to, have to all fit into an architecture so that everything works. Because sometimes there are breakthrough strategies. People come to us all the time and say, I just need the big idea to kind of like shift the business in the right direction, you know? And, and we do find these kind of, I guess, breakthrough strategies where, you know, a business might go from yeah, like 10 customers a week to kind of like 100 or 200 customers per week, where we do find these strategies. However, we need things in place. Otherwise, there's this surge, there's this chaos that creates more problems a lot of the time, and then it drops off really quickly. So we need things in place so then we consistently benefit from those strategies. Otherwise, you might have spent money or time on getting that breakthrough strategy to happen, but then it sort of just covers costs anyway. So we do need to have all these things in place and we can't rely on these kind of like breakthrough strategy after breakthrough strategy, you know, where it creates this massive surge of customers. We need consistency. It's all the little levers that, 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 that we pull that consistently move us in the right direction. So I'll show you how to do that now. What you need, uh, we have the framework, the uh, template for you, which you can grab on this page. Make sure you do um, or have already popped your email address into our system so that you receive the template. You can always find it again because if you close this page off, for example, and you can't find your way back here, um, you might want to come back to this and reference the video and also get the template. You'll have that in the email that we send you from our system. So make sure to grab the, um, the template, make sure your email's in our system so you get that. You can always find it in your inbox or reference back to it and you can always find your way back to this video uh, as well. So first column, what we title this is traffic. So I'm gonna draw it up, my handwriting is terrible. So make sure you uh, grab the template and you do it for yourself because it's obviously you've got to customize it and tailor it for yourself as we go. So first thing, traffic. This is where most marketing fits into that people consider marketing activities. So things like Google ads, Facebook ads, signage, a business networking event, um, uh, you know, magazines, print, all these things. I'll, I'll just write a few in, but really uh, you get the idea. Google, Google, a number of different ways to, to use Google, but we'll say Google ads. It could be video ads, of course, uh, as well. Um, let's say print. Uh, let's say networking, so it's not all kind of, you know, so there's online, offline, face-to-face, -face, different styles of strategies. Now we could go on and on and on and on. Of course, the social media, you know, with Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever you're using, there's lots of strategies within that. But the point of all of these strategies is to get traffic. So our number, one of the high level numbers we need to be tracking is traffic. So the number here is traffic. How much traffic do we move to our website? Now this is key because all of these strategies you don't own these platforms. You're paying or, or spending time to be on someone else's space, someone else's real estate. 
So for example, social media, you might spend your whole life, you know, doing your Facebook or uh, Instagram or uh, LinkedIn or whatever, and suddenly they change the rules, they change the algorithm, and you, or your account gets blocked, which happens quite commonly, quite often, um, and suddenly it, it stops working, you know? Um, so the purpose of these strategies is actually to get them off the platform onto your own real estate where you can control what happens and when. So this is our goal. Get the traffic, move them off. And sometimes people, or often people get caught in the weeds like thinking, you know, it's all about their, their Instagram profile or something. But the, the reality is if you're in business, the purpose of your Instagram profile is to get people off the Instagram profile spending money with you. You know, and once they've spent money with you and you're in your system, then you control what you promote, when you promote, you can do follow-ups and things like that as long as you do a good job, which we'll get to uh, down the track. So, traffic. Now, within each of these strategies, of course, as we build out more and more and more here, we can start to work out the numbers within each strategy as well. But just keeping an eye on, you do need the overall figure, how much traffic moved to the website, People often ask me, what's a good volume? It's just, it's relevant to you. It doesn't matter comparing to others. It's uh, pointless because if you get 100 last week to your website, coming from all of your strategies, let's aim for, you know, 120 next month or 120 next week. So you might look over the, over the month, we had an ad, average of 100 visitors per week. Okay, next week, let's, you know, next month, let's go for an average of 150 per week. And then we'll go for high, build, build, build so that everything we're doing gets better. Because otherwise you can, you can get caught in the weeds of like worrying so much about your Instagram that you forget that the purpose of it is to drive people to a website to generate income. It's like so focused on uh, things within there. Maybe there'll be other strategies that could work 10 times better where it might be like forming an alliance with another business or organization that already has tens of thousands of followers and they can promote you and you get 10,000 more followers overnight than, you know, sorry, visitors overnight. Um, or doing a PR campaign um, like a press release to the media and you get some free publicity on a platform or on an online platform, you get the idea. But as long as we're measuring overall traffic, also what can happen, this is one of the challenges within marketing is, you might credit all of your traffic to a certain platform or like a majority, but the reality is you might be doing a number of different things and then if your overall traffic is increasing, so what I mean by this is you might be running Facebook ads and Facebook ads is showing really good conversions. People are clicking, you're getting a lot of traffic, but the reality is it might also be that you're doing Google ads and your Google ads are building more and more awareness and suddenly the, um, the traffic for Facebook increases, but then the organic traffic increases and you get all these different numbers. So you need uh, like all this extra traffic um, and it's all getting credited to a certain platform, but it might have been that they saw your signage, they saw your Google ad, and then they happen to just click through from Facebook and it gets all the credit. So we do need to start to look at the individual numbers and then most importantly, the overall figure. Otherwise we know we might be able to drop a strategy there and move on. The purpose of the next column is to get conversions. So I'm gonna do this as traffic comes, the numbers we're looking at for conversions, are either, we'll call this a sale conversion. It's not necessarily gonna be exactly a sale. Some of you might have products on your website where someone lands on the website and then you can see how much traffic arrived on the website, how many of them clicked and bought the product or service. You know, if you're an e-commerce style, style, style um, business for sure, then you can have that, you know, straight away you can see those figures. Some of you, it might not be a sale, it might be that they take like a, a trial or a taste test or a sample, or it might be that they book a meeting, you know, like it could be you're, uh, you're booking, a, they book a quote, uh, you know, or, or just a sales meeting with you to discovery, like a discovery call or something that you offer like that. So, but we still want to measure that because we need to know how many, if you have uh, people meeting to, moving to meetings, we need to know how many booked the meetings from the traffic so we can start to target better traffic to get more meetings and we can start to make your, or adjust, how do you talk about the meeting, the offering of the meeting? Does it sound good? Does it sound valuable? Is it positioned well on the website? Is it crystal clear on the homepage? Like if you want people booking quotes, you should have book a quote crystal clear on the homepage. So the traffic lands, they can move towards that sale conversion really easy. So if we see, okay, last average last month, you got you booked five quotes, you know, got people booking an average of five quotes per week. 
Then we're going to look at on the website, how can we try and get people to take more of these quotes? Maybe we need to put a testimonial right under the quote with five star reviews next to it. Maybe your credibility right next to it. Maybe really emphasize it, move it up on the homepage so people see it clearer. But you get the idea. Whatever this action is, we call that a sales. It's like a sales conversion. It's a sales conversion, whether it's taking a step down the path towards becoming a customer or they're buying there and then. So we're measuring those, that conversion. How many took the action towards a sale um, or bought directly if you do sell directly from the website. Number two is leads. So now we're getting lead conversions. So what this means from how much traffic, we've got that number we're measuring on the, from the website. And the next one is how many leads did we get? Now leads are important because typically an average website might generate a good number to a sale conversion would be about 2%. So what about the other 98% of traffic that you move to your website? This is where people see it have the problem. It probably highlights something for a lot of you right now is, you know, you might have run Google ads and people click, click, click the ads, but not enough of them take that conversion step towards a sale for you to continue running the ads or justify the ads, right? So what we need to understand is not everybody's ready to jump that. It's quite a big hurdle to move towards a sale the first time you land on a website. People go through this decision making period where they go from the point of having an idea to the point of handing over money. And this decision making period will vary for different individuals. It's like this really quick win approach where we get the someone clicks an ad and they land on the website and they move towards a sale and we love that. We're all human, we want a quick fix, we want a quick sale. Um, however, the majority, the other 98%, someone might take a week to make a decision, someone's gonna take two weeks, someone's gonna take six months, someone's gonna take six years before they actually decide to buy from you. So you need to make sure you nurture them for as long as it takes so that you see a return from what you did back here in the traffic column. So we need to make sure we're nurturing, whether it takes three weeks, six months, three years, we are nurturing, otherwise whatever we did here was wasted. So if somebody comes through, even if they take six months, great, you're still seeing a return from something you did in this column six months ago. We need to basically own as much of this traffic as we can. So to get leads, some ideas, you need to be measuring it from your website. You could have a number of different ways, but it might be that someone downloads an information pack or a sales kit or something like that. Um, I'll just call that kit. It could be that you have a, an opt-in where you, you give away something valuable, like you say, um, opt-in to you know, download our um, tax saving template with the 10 point checklist. You need to review every quarter when you're doing your tax and reviewing your tax to make sure you're not paying more on tax than you need to be. So opt-in for an information thing. It could be opt-in to watch a four part video. Now opt-in, like a little form, what I'm talking about is might be a little form that says, enter your name and email in return for this free thing. And it's not vague. Opt-ins that don't work are vague. They, they say things something like, um, stay up to date with our latest news, you know, or join our newsletter or something like that. It needs to be very specific. Like I've just said, the 10 point checklist or the template, you know, tax saving template that we offer if you're like a bookkeeper or accounting business, for example. Or it could be something like, um, get instant access to this four minute video from our head chiropractor you know, and founder of our business to show you how to set up your workspace to be ergonomically correct you know, for your posture. Something like that, and it's a little video that they can get access to. It could be a, you know, a camera buying guide, don't know about the latest tech or something, download our seven step buyer's guide to make sure you buy the right thing, whether you buy from us or anybody else, you know, whatever this, this thing is. It's a specific thing that does a specific thing. A decent opt-in might get about 5% opting in. A good performing opt-in might get about 10%, so suddenly you're getting a lot more of these that you're gonna now be able to nurture. If you're doing getting 10% plus, which a lot of our members do that we work with, uh, get over 10% opting in of their traffic, which is brilliant because you make this really attractive looking thing. Keep it clear on the homepage because you wanna get as many moving towards pathway number one, sales conversion as possible, but then we need everyone else, if as much as best as possible, opting in, becoming a lead conversion. Sometimes you might be able to, other ideas have like a live chat or something like that. Some of you, the, the things in here, you might just generate a lead that don't really move them towards a sale very soon. There could be slower, um, slower things with the trial actually might go on and on and on. 
and it's a slower conversion where we might treat them as a lead as well. But basically, there's your number and there's your number. So how much of the traffic landed? What was the conversion rate to a sale action? And what was the conversion rate to a lead action? Our next column over here is relationships. Oh. Now, relationships, this is once you've got the details of someone, they've opted in, or you've got, or they've taken an initial meeting or a quote or something, what have you got in place to follow up? So there might be things in place to encourage a sale where somebody, they, they uh, got a, a quote, for example, or they did a trial meeting with you, and then you send a follow-up. It could be sort of, a, oh, in the meantime, while you're deciding whether to work with us or not, how about here's a, um, you know, a resource, a PDF, a two-page PDF on choosing the right roof tiler or choosing the right accountant for small business and things you should look out for, you know, blah, 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 blah. So you can give this bonus so that if they, in the meantime, they're talking to you know, they spoke to you and they're gonna to talk to two of your competitors, you're the one providing value in the meantime with a bit of a bonus resource and looking after them a bit better. So to nurture those sales relationships. On the other hand, this is where a big part of this 98% here, we move across to how do we maintain the relationships with them, even if it's gonna take them six months, you know, or six years to make a decision. And this is where you might provide, like. I'll just write newsletter. I'm not a big fan of newsletters unless it's really relevant for your space. Newsletter, sometimes people get a database system and they think I have to write this long newsletter. Keep in mind when people are in their email inbox, they're impatient, their attention is fickle. So maybe what would be better is you just send a, a tip once a month. Don't overdo it. It could be a one, two paragraph, three paragraph tip. You might have a little formula where you send a two paragraph, three bullet point tip once every month or once every two weeks. A short little tip, if you do it once a month, you've only got to do 12 over the year, but you keep yourself front and center of mind sending something valuable and valuable is key. It's a good little tip, short, sharp, valuable. Keeping in mind people's attention is really fickle when they're in the inbox. So, and what you're doing with every email, what you have to keep in mind is you're training people for the future, whether they should open your emails or not. So if they open the first couple of emails you get and they're really long and waffly, they're gonna file them away or just delete them because I've never got time when I'm in my inbox, I'm busy because there's too much to do. Short, sharp, ah, these are good, I'll open these in the future. You know, so I'll stay on the, the newsletter, I'll stay on the subscription and so on as well. Sometimes you might do something like do an article on your website once every month and you share a little preview via email to your database and share a little preview on social media, you know, all your different traffic strategies to get people circulating back to the website. And the number in this column, how big is your database? Is it growing? So how many contacts are receiving this regular content from you? Ideally, you have their email address at this point, And that's a number you can be measuring because this is usually the most undervalued section of this entire thing I'm going through. To get a return from your traffic, you need to nurture people for as long as it takes. If you get nice valuable opt-in, you get their details, you get them onto a tip once a month, they take six months to buy, that's brilliant. Because this database here, these contacts that you're nurturing are your future sales. Their next month sales, their next quarter sales, their next year's sales. They're more valuable than your bank account, that database and those contacts. Every contact is like a little seed in the garden that you've got to nurture, 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 nurture to reap the harvest next year, a year after, year after, year after. So this is an easier life for you and your business in the future. And it ensures we're seeing returns from here because you'll have people come back, you know, they hit this point of uh, ready to purchase at all different rates. So you consistently start to get more and more and more sales. And then the good news is when you're nurturing these contacts, when you do run a promotion, I'll call this react, reactivate. Oh, sorry, my pen got stuck. Uh, reactivate, this is basically where we run a promotion from time to time. So now the reason I call it reactivate is when someone's come from traffic onto your website, imagine this is kind of like a, uh, let's draw like a thermometer here. Here's hot and here's cold. And this is time. 
running along the bottom. Now, when someone's landed on your website, they're looking at your business. They can see who you are, right? They're, they're pretty hot. It's like, okay, staring at this business. Now, what happens is, as, as a couple of days go past, the temperature drops. They forget who you are. So it's like, they went away from the website, and then I might want to buy a product or service or look for a, an engineer, something I'm looking for at the moment to do renovations at home. I might get back on Google and look for other local engineers. Who did I look at, who did I look at the other day? I can't remember. There's a lot around, right? So I've gone cold. I might just get back on Google whoever comes up will get the sale, right? So what happens is we go cold pretty quick. So when they land on the site, pathway number one to move towards the sale should be very clear while they're here, they're pretty hot. If they don't take that up, pathway number two, we're gonna try and give them something of value while they're here, while they're looking at us, they haven't forgotten about us and left the site yet. And then we're offering consistent value over time, nurturing the relationship so they don't go as cold and then every now and then, you will run a promotion to reactivate and get them hot again, get them back in for more sales. So every now and then are running a, um, you know, it could be a, a Valentine's Day sale, a Boxing Day sale, a special start of summer special, end of summer special, you get the idea, Mother's Day special promotion. Now, as long as you do a promotion and you explain why you're doing a promotion, it won't, under, it won't devalue your products or services, you just have to justify it. Here's a promotion because, and here's, and you can basically come up with your own reasons why it's a special promotion. Um, a good way to work out a kind of overview of your promotion plan is you grab a piece of paper, turn it landscape, put January, February, March, April, May, right through to December, across the whole year, across the page. And then on that page, you, can, you look at it and go, when are we gonna promote what? So what makes, like, what makes sense? When to promote what? And we'll try and work out your promotions. So you're not overly doing it, unless you are like a bargain website business or something like that, which most of you wouldn't be. Um, the goal here, keep in mind, is you nurture and become the trusted advisor. This column is absolutely most important. If you look after this column, the sales will happen. The promotion you run will go crazy. You'll get amazing results because you've got people who trust you. And then when you promote, they will buy. So you'll get a good surge. Numbers you're measuring on this column are simply Last promotion, how did we go? What was the total volume of sales? Next promotion, you know, what's the total volume of sales? So you can look at what you did and make adjustments and tweak and so on. Try and as a general kind of rule, it's all this will vary for different businesses obviously, but if you keep as a general rule, try and do 10 times build the relationship. It's like put all the value, the, the focus here for every one time you focus on doing a straight up promotion to sell. Now, and then when you do make a sale, so you'll have sales come through from, uh, from your sales uh, process here when people land immediately on the site. You'll also have sales come through from these uh, promotions that you run, so that, that kind of happens. Now when you do make the sale, there's a couple of things to just think about after the sale. What do you want to happen? Because often people make a purchase, they get this like a receipt type email. As soon as someone gets a booking email or a receipt type email, they usually open those emails. What most people don't do is they don't market in those. What you should do is, in that very first email, ideally, you would share, by the way, here's other products and services we offer, in case you didn't know. Because most people, when we purchase anything, we kind of have our blinkers on, we kind of like the horsey. <laughs> like we come in, we buy the thing we want, and then we get out. We don't go through a whole website looking at every product, product and service. Whereas as business owners, often people think, oh, it's on the website, of course it's there. They know it's there. Um, it's not the case. You've got to lead people down the pathway you want them to go down. So they might have purchased one thing, the purpose of sale number one now to maximize your return from the traffic column is to get sale number two. So in the first email, let them know what else you have. Say thanks, here's your receipt, da 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 da. And then you can follow up and maximize. Now this will vary for different businesses. Maximize your return by doing things like um, asking them to refer a friend, asking for a review when it makes sense. A lot of business owners make, or businesses make the mistake of asking for a review as soon as someone's purchased, but I haven't even got the product yet, haven't even got to the thanks for checkout page yet or anything, like how do I know how to review you yet? So do the, ask for the review at a time when it, you know, when it makes sense. Um, also refer a friend. Um, now a good thing to include here in a post sales sequence so after the purchase is a bonus. Now, 
if you can, so it might be that someone bought a bicycle off you and you send an email a couple of days later saying, hey, by the way, as an extra bonus, for, you know, as a sign of our gratitude, thanks so much. Here's a little video on how to maintain your bike at home. Plus, we're gonna give you a free service at six months. Come on, bring the bike back in. We'll make sure everything's you know, happening beautifully for you or at one month, three months, whatever makes sense. Um, it can be a little link to your favorite article, blog, something, but an unexpected bonus goes a very, very long way. And also what that does is, once again, trains people to open your emails because after they've made a purchase, where do they go? They go back into the relationship column where you will nurture the relationship ongoing from someone who's bought, and then once again, when you promote and so on, they'll come back and buy uh, in the future as well. So once again, make sure you grab the uh, template, work through this as a bit of a checklist for yourself. What are you doing you could write in? What will you be doing? Keep an eye on these numbers. It's a really good practice to create a spreadsheet. Very simple, put the numbers, traffic, sales conversions, leads conversions, maybe you call it database, you know, numbers, whatever you want to call. And then the promotions you'll look at as a separate review where you'll compare when you do promotions because you might only do one once every two months, three months or whenever works and is relevant for your business. Uh, and those numbers that you're looking at here should be reviewed weekly. Then as you spend more time and money in any strategy within the traffic column, you grab that strategy, you look at the, num the spend and the numbers for that specific strategy, so you can zero in and measure that as well. So each week you should be, it literally could take 10 minutes. A lot of website platforms nowadays give you the information where it'll say, here's how much traffic you got this week and here's where the traffic came from. Uh, WordPress is very popular. There's a Google Analytics plugin for WordPress websites where you can just go into the WordPress dashboard and it has it all summarized in there for you. Um, or Google Analytics, of course, is a great way to go. You can, you can find all the information you need. But basically, pretty straightforward, right? So what we're looking at is every week, it'll take you about 10 minutes to look at how much traffic did we get this week? You put it in your spreadsheet. Is that good or bad? Is it growing, going in the right direction? How many conversions did we get to sales conversions? How many leads conversions? How big is our database growing? And then you're looking at these numbers every single week because what it will do, and you enter them into the spreadsheet, it will pull your focus to what's important rather than we are oh, we're just doing social media with media we're doing it doing it doing it or you're paying someone to do it for you but is it really actually even working for you you know it pulls the focus so you can direct people to improve it or you can push them to change it improve it because you you need to be focusing on you know getting more traffic and then on the website what can we be doing here it'll be pulling your focus to what's important is our offer towards a sale terrible and we need to improve it if it is it doesn't matter how much traffic you get to the website if the if the, the offer on the website or the next step towards a sale is not inviting, you're not, you're not gonna get people convert no matter how much traffic you bring. And the same goes with a, if you haven't got an opt-in, you're potentially wasting you know, 98% or even probably likely more of your efforts from the traffic column because you're not getting them. Now, what the way we kind of work with this sort of thing is we build out the different pathways. So even if you have a small amount of traffic going to your website currently, we build out the different pathways and we get the small amount of traffic converting better down the different um, pathways here and then into the relationship so we have people to promote to and to nurture. And then once we've got the small amount of traffic converting well, then we go back to the traffic column and that's where we try to you know, look for, okay, what's the magic strategy that we can push up? Big surge of traffic to your website and then we can learn from and we can start to consistently do. And you can start to spend more money on ads because you're seeing a return from the money that's higher, but from the spend that's higher. So you can start to outspend your competitors with Google ads, outspend your competitors with Facebook, Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads, you know, for example. So you can start to even employ someone here because you start seeing the returns are getting higher. Um, and marketing is really, really fun when it's working. It's awesome when it's working. Uh, so that's our marketing ecosystem and how it fits together. I trust this has been valuable for you. If you do have questions for basic bananas, get in touch with us. Make sure, yeah, you've grabbed the details here. Make sure you're in our email list so that you can see how we do it. And I, I promise you we send valuable content ongoing. Um, we have awesome free workshops and trainings. Uh, we love to see people transform their business because it transforms their lives, you know, behind the scenes. So it's really awesome and exciting for us. Um, get in touch with us at basicbananas.com. 
Feel free to share this video with others who you know would benefit. Helps us impact the lives of more people in a positive way, so that's what we're all about. Uh, yeah, and I'd love to hear from you in the future. Check it out uh, on basicbananas.com. You can find me on, as well on social media as Christo Hall. And I look forward to speaking to you soon.